guys, welcome. It is a time for another monthly wrap up. So we're gonna be discussing all of the books I read in October. And I actually had, I would say, a very, very good reading month in October. So we're gonna go through all my reading statistics, of course, and then talk a little bit about each of the books that I read. But before we actually get into it, I wanna show you guys something that is so exciting, like one of the most exciting things that has happened to me having this channel. And I wanna go show you something that I have very kindly been gifted. So let's go. Okay, guys, the super exciting thing that I've got to show you is this. So this is my new standing desk. It is the Yo-Yo Desk Pro 1 from sitstand.com. I have literally always wanted a standing desk because before I had this, I was literally just sitting at my old desk for hours, up to like 10 hours a day sometimes when I was working. My hips have gotten really tight, my back has gotten really bad, my posture has gotten really bad. So I have always wanted a standing desk and you guys, look at it, it's amazing. <laughs> I have been testing this out for about the past week and a half just to see what it's like before I talk to you guys about it and it's actually just been so so amazing. You can adjust the height as much as you want to whatever height you want. It's so cool to be able to work standing up now. I feel like my back is thanking me. <laughs> And it came packaged amazingly. Everything was in these little bags, like sectioned out to what you needed. It wasn't like all the parts were kind of jumbled together. Everything was in neat little bags. It was really clear to set up. I also have, hang on, let me grab it. <laughs> I also have this standing pad, which I stand on. And this is super important as it encourages like your leg muscles to carry on moving so that it doesn't damage your legs or knees at all. It's like a plush mat and I have a lot of fun standing on it and moving about on it like this. <laughs> it has honestly been a game changer for me. I have loved working so much more in like the week and a half that I have had this. And something that is actually super amazing is I have a 50 pound coupon code for you guys to use, which is in the description. So I'll leave their website link down below. They have honestly been amazing and I love this desk so much and just every step of the way has been so amazing for this desk. So I cannot recommend this enough if you've ever thought about getting a standing desk, especially since so many of us are like working from home now or working remotely. I think it's such a beneficial thing to have. So go check out the website down below and make sure you use the code for 50 pounds off. 50 pounds is a lot of money. My life is revolutionized from now on now that I have a standing desk. I actually can't believe it. Isn't it crazy? I'm so happy. Okay, so let's talk about all the reading statistics for this month. So I read a total of 12 books this month, which is pretty high. I usually read, I think between like, now that I'm not at uni, between 11 and 13 books a month. So pretty much average for me. I read a total of 4,072 pages, which is my highest page total count, which I'm so happy with. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. Check out the bless me. <laughs> That is an average of 131 pages per day and 339 pages per book. My average rating was 3.625, which is kind of like on the lower end of my average ratings. I've had like some books that I really, really enjoyed, like some five stars this month that I feel like are some of my favorite five stars of the year, but also some not so good books and some very disappointing books and some books that I don't want to talk about. <laughs> She's not gonna go there. Okay, more in depth on the ratings, I had three five stars, two four stars, three 3.5 stars, two three stars, and two two stars. So that's why it's a little bit on the lower end. In terms of genre, I read one classic, one fantasy, one historical, three horror, four mystery, <laughs> one poetry, and one romance. So a good mix of genres, but I love mystery supremacy. I just love to see it. I just love to see it. In terms of age range, I read eight adult and four YA. In terms of where I acquired the books, one was from Book of the Month, five were books that had been gifted to me, five were books I'd previously owned, and one was sent to me by the publisher. In terms of series, seven were part of a series and five were not. That's, listen, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Series, I just don't even want to talk about series anymore. Series just need to get it, like, series, I'm done. I'm done. At this point, I'm done. 
we're not talking about series anymore. I'm done. In terms of author race, three were black authors, one was an indigenous author, seven were white authors, and one author's race was unknown. So I didn't want to like, I never want to prescribe or guess someone's race. And then in terms of author status, five were debuts, three were authors I'd read before, and four were new to me. So a lot more debuts this month. Okay, so that is all of my reading statistics. Now, these videos are usually too long. Every fucking month, every fucking month, every fucking month without fail. I say, oh, I'm gonna keep this bit quick because <laughs> you've heard me speak about all these books before. I'm really gonna try and do it. Sure, Jan. I say it every month. I say every month I'm really gonna try and do it. I'm gonna do it. The first book I read this month was A Song of Race and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. I gave this four stars and this was in my booktube rewind video where I read books that had been popular a year ago. And I didn't really enjoy this. It's a great kind of African inspired fantasy. We've got two characters who have kind of got like a romance going on throughout the book or like a will they won't they kind of situation. But they also both wanna kill each other. <laughs> Not because they don't like each other, but they both want to use each other to achieve something that's very important to them and they have to kill the other one to do that. I cannot remember a lot of what I thought about this book, gonna be quite honest. <laughs> But I enjoyed the writing. It's a fun fantasy, do you know what I mean? It's just like a well-paced YA fantasy. I feel like I've had a lot of trouble with YA fantasy. We haven't been on the best terms. <laughs> I don't know her. But this one I really, really enjoyed and I'm very excited to read the second in the duology at some point because I think it's just coming out. Then I reread one of my favorite books of all time, if not the favorite book of all time. Well, The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. I say well, because I often say the second in this series is my favorite in the series. So this can't be my favorite book of all time, but hey ho. I reread this with my patrons for our Patreon book club. Usually they vote on around a TBR Cluedo to pick what book we're gonna read, but the first month, just because of time, we couldn't do that. So I got them to vote on one of my favorites, which are my favorites we should reread. And this was chosen. And I cannot tell you what an amazing reading experience this was. Like, I just had the best time. I loved rereading this. I fell in love with it even more. I, I was so worried because I feel like sometimes with rereading your favorite book it's risky that's a fucking risky game it's why I don't do it that often because you could hate it <laughs> or not hate it but it could not have that magic that you fell in love with in the first time and this still did the way that this mystery is plotted but even more so that the relationship between these girls I'm not even going to give you a plot breakdown of this book because you don't need it like if you're here watching this video surely you've heard me speak about this about 20 times <laughs> This bitch, here she go again. But yeah, these girls, this girl gang, falling in love with each other in the most familial, wonderful way. The mystery was Sherlock Watson. The way, that, uh, it's just like the best book ever written. Theodore Goss. I need 10 more. I just need more books for these girls. I'm very worried we're never gonna get it. And listen, let it be known, I'll say it again. Theodora Goss said she'd be up for it. We just need someone to buy it. I need to win the lottery make my own publishing house and all I'm gonna all I'm gonna commission is Theodora Goss to write more of this series. Okay so then I did a reading vlog where I read like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, a speaky queen. <laughs> For a week I read books that she has read. First I read Death of the Salesman by Arthur Miller. I cannot remember a fucking nugget of information about this play. I just can't. I gave it two stars. It's about this guy who like is depressed and he was a salesman like driving around everywhere to sell stuff. And it's about his relationship with his sons. Ladies, if you don't have to read this book, don't. <laughs> then I read, if I can grab it, um, Hunting Prince Dracula by Carrie Maniscalco. This was fine. <laughs> So in this series, we follow Audrey Rose and Thomas Cresswell as they solve these mysteries together and basically have a romance together. And this should be my favorite thing, right? I love Victoria. Victoria? Queen Victoria herself, I love. No, I love Victorian times in books. I love historical fiction. I love, you know, we get pictures throughout the book. I love anything a bit mixed media. We get pictures to like show us what's being spoken about. Me and this series should be together. We should be dating. <laughs> But we're not, because there's something about the writing I just don't vibe with. Being in Audrey Rose's head, I find a bit too much. She's too much, she's too much. And I just don't know if it's particularly well written. Oh my God, T Central over here. Like this was a quick fun read, like the plotting was good. I thought that the characters were very interesting. We had a much more interesting, like wider cast of characters that Audrey got to know. I thought that was really a step up from the first book. So I think I gave the first one three stars and I gave this one 3.5. There's just something about the writing that I don't vibe with and I've said it 
a thousand times, writing for me is the first port of call. Like, if I don't vibe with the writing, I find it very hard to get into the book. But then I decided to read a romance as Buffy is a hopeless romantic and I read The Love Hypothesis by Ellie Hazelwood and this for me was the biggest surprise of the month. I gave this five stars. It is by far my favourite romance I've ever read. So listen, here's the sitch. I know I'm not known as a romance gal, but I can be if you serve me up something of this quality. This is the kind of quality I need to be wowed and wooed and amazed by a romance. We're following these two characters as they fake date to kind of both get something out of it, you know, for their career. They both work in science and STEM in labs, I don't know, language. <laughs> dum dum. <laughs> and yeah, they fake date to kind of particularly help her out, but he is also getting some like career benefits out of it. But of course they start to fall for each other. And it's grump and sunshine, perfection, the way, ugh. I can't, I can't. He is a, he's a man. He is a man. <laughs> I want to fuck you the minute I saw you. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, it is just excellent. So well written. You just fly through it. I cried. I fucking cried at a romance. I cried. Tears streaming down my face. It's amazing. If you like romance at all, like even slightly, if you want to dip your toe, this is where you need to start. It was so good. I'm so glad I picked this up because I so could have easily not because I'm not a big romance reader, but I am so glad I picked it up. One of my favorite books of the year so far. I just thought it was amazing. Then I read Egghead by Bo Burnham. I cannot find this. <laughs> my room and my books are in a bit of disarray, so I don't know where it's gone. And I don't have many thoughts. <laughs> I think I give it three stars. I love Bo Burnham. Bo Burnham is my favorite comedian ever. And I loved this poetry book when I was younger, but I just don't think it aged particularly well. You know, I thought this was like God's gift sent to the earth when I was younger, but reading it now, I just felt differently. I've got a whole in-depth one video review for this book. So that's, I'm just gonna send you over there because I can't remember everything well enough and I have all my thoughts in that video for that book. So we do not need to discuss it here because I've already discussed it to death. Then I read horror for a week since it was spooky season. I read some horror books for a week and this one, I don't wanna fucking, I don't wanna talk about it either. I don't wanna talk about it. Don't want to talk about it. I read White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. One of, if not the like most anticipated release of this year so far. I just loved the premise. We have this family move into this new house and it's haunted and it's scary and crazy. And I was just so excited. Um, It didn't do it for me. It didn't do it for me. I think in terms of my enjoyment, this was a 2.5, but I gave it a three because part of me just wasn't, I don't think actually in the mood for horror when I was reading these horror books. So I tried to, you know, reflect on that. So yeah, in this Marigold, um, main character and her family has moved into this house and spooky shit, unexplainable shit starts happening in her house. There's a lot of interesting discussions in here on weed and the policing of weed and how that affects whole communities, on policing in general, on um, anxiety, on gentrification. There was a lot of important conversations to be had in this book. I thought it did that well, but I was just a bit bored. I was just bored. And also the ending was disappointing for me. If this had had an amazing ending where I was like, whoa, where I was like, shook, and like in a good way, this could have you know, bumped itself up to like a 3.5. Like it generally could have done, but the ending was so disappointing and so like, girl, is that it? <laughs> it's not for me, Mark. I'm, I feel terribly ill all of a sudden. And then I read The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. Being slightly removed from this book, I I don't feel <laughs> qualified to talk about it because it felt like a fever dream. This book is like slasher, intense, strange horror. And like even being a couple weeks removed from reading it, I'm like, I am gonna fuck up talking about this because it just, in my head so much is jumbled and the things I want to talk about with this book are always spoilers so like we are following these four guys who killed a group of elk years and years ago and now nature is coming back to punish them essentially. I think this book did a wonderful job of incorporating indigenous culture into it. It's so steeped in indigenous culture and as someone who has never really read a book like this before, I feel like I learned so much while also being fucking scared. <laughs> There's some perspectives in this. The perspe Okay, 
not spoiling anything, but there's some perspective in this that killed me. Like, that were my favourite part of reading this. I gave this a 3.5 because I had, if you watched the vlog, I had like a very up and down reading experience with it. We went through, we went through it. We went through it together. But um, yeah, I would really, really recommend it. And quickly, I read three murder mystery books for a week. Murder mystery is my favourite genre. So every time around this year, I have a week where I just read murder mysteries because otherwise I find it hard to read them and to fit them into reading vlogs. So we'll just go through this really quick because again, there's a whole vlog in it. I read Dead Dead Girls by Nikesa Afia. I gave this four stars. I thought this was such a fun debut. We're following this young girl who has to work with the police to solve these murders that are happening in Harlem where young black girls are going missing and then being murdered and she has to help the police try and figure out what's going on. I thought this was so well written. I thought it was so vividly the 1920s New York. Like I feel like that image was conjured up so so well. I loved our main character, I thought she was like so headstrong, I was like bitch fucking get it when everything happened, like I just loved her and I feel like you really connected to her as a main character and I would really really recommend this, I thought it was such a strong debut, I am so excited to read more in the series. I would say the it lost me a little bit at the end, the ending pacing was off, <laughs> like it dragged out, dragged out and then fucking everything happened in two seconds. So that was the one thing that kept me from like rating it at five stars, but I did really enjoy it. Then one of my favourite books of this year so far that I've read was The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. This was so so good is about four friends who have a Thursday murder club at their retirement home where they go through cold cases and try and solve these murders but then a murder happens on their doorstep and it was so good it was so funny it was so well plotted like there were oh my god there were so many twists and turns in this mystery I was ooing I was awing I was wincing I was loling quite heartily like I love it when a mystery really up until the last moment purposely makes me think something, makes me think something, and I'm, and it's something I don't want to happen. I'm sitting there going, no, come on, no, 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 no. Like you think you've solved it, but you don't want that to be the case. And then it switches on your bitch. It switches on, yeah. I loved this. It was so funny. It was so amazing to read about elderly characters, solving these murder mysteries and just having the most fun. And I would just so highly recommend this. It was one of the best books I've read so far this year. The writing was incredible. It was just one of the most enjoyable reads ever. Like I read it all in one evening. I was just so engrossed with it. I cannot wait to read the second one. You guys, this was so fucking good. If you have any like slight interest in reading this book, go read it. Finally for that vlog, and this is the last book I'm gonna talk about because I did read another book in this month, but I don't wanna talk about it yet. I don't wanna spoil anything. Um, so I will speak about that next month. But I also read Marion Lane and the Midnight Murder. One of my most, again, a fucking get, a fucking again. Again, a fucking again. One of my most anticipated releases of this year. I actually can't open my eyes. <laughs> It was two stars. It was two stars. It wasn't good. This is like a locked room murder mystery set in 1950s London where there's this kind of like detective agency underground but it's also magical and a locked room mystery takes place and that's all I'm gonna say. She tries to solve it. The mystery was not interesting. The pacing was off. It didn't feel like there's a lot of depth to the story. There wasn't a lot actually happening. I didn't feel like it was 1950s. Like the only thing that made it feel like 1950s was that she was, her grandma was determined to marry her off. And there was a lot of discussion about how women had to be married. That was the only 1950s kind of vibe. Everything else felt modern. I didn't enjoy the writing personally, personally, personally didn't enjoy the writing. It was just so sad. <laughs> I had to force myself through this book. I should have probably just DNF it but I loved this cover so much that I just kept holding out hope I just kept fucking hoping that something was gonna happen and then nothing did so there we have it that is all of the books that I read this month I think I had a pretty good reading month like the love hypothesis and the Thursday murder club I would say are some of my favorite books I have read so far this year and so I feel like they were like top top five stars which is really great I just really enjoyed my reading this month although we had a few ups and downs I feel like I had a good reading month let me know what some of the books you read in October were some of your favorite Favorite, some of your least favorites that you read in October, I would love to know. If you've gotten to the end of this video, comment a clock emoji. Comment a clock emoji if you've gotten to the end of this video. Don't forget to go check out the link to sit stand down below. Don't forget to go check out the coupon code down below. I would highly recommend it and I'll see you all soon in another video. Bye!